Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm going to be doing the BookTube SFF Babbles topic of shortlist reactions. So I'm kind of excited to do this. I haven't really participated too much in the Babbles before, but I would like to try to do the ones this year, and reacting to the shortlist is a great way to start. So the first category on the shortlist is Best Adult Fantasy. The first book in this is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This is a book that actually made my top books of 2019 list. So I'm already in love with this category. This book was something that I'd really hoped would get on the shortlist and I'm so glad that it made it because I thought it was fantastic. It is just this gorgeous story about the 1920s in Mexico with all of this Mayan mythology and a road trip and quests and it's just so much fun and I love the mythology. So the other books are going to have to do quite a lot in order to match up to this one. The second book in this category is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, and I am actually really excited to read this. This is something that I've heard such positive things about. My cousin Jade at Bedtime Bookworm, who I will link below, has this as one of her favorite books of 2019, and from everything that I've heard about it, it sounds like probably it's right up my alley. It's this long, epic, maybe somewhat slow fantasy that looks at a lot of things relating to gender and roles, and I'm really excited about this. So I need to find time to read it, but I think this is a real contender. Although again, it would have to do quite a lot in order for me to rank this above Gods of Jade and Shadow. The third book in this category is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Now this is a book that I know a lot of people were into and were excited about, although I think it got mixed reviews when it actually came out. I've never read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, which I think is a, a vastly loved book on booktube, so I wasn't really into this. I wasn't looking forward to the book, um, but I have heard some people talk about the beauty of the language and the atmosphere, and that's something that could really appeal to me. A uh, cousin at Always Doing, who I will link below, talked about that, about how this, this book is not about the plot or even the characters, but rather the atmosphere. And actually, I think that I'm less about plot than I am about characters and atmosphere. So I've never tried something like this, but I wonder if it could really work for me. So I'd like to try to get to it as well. I, again, I'm not sure that it could beat out Gods of Jade and Shadow, but I'm willing to give it a try. The next category is Best Adult Sci-Fi. The first book in this category is Recursion by Blake Crouch. Now this one I'm not so sure about. Um, it sounds like Blake Crouch writes these sci-fi thrillers with a lot of kind of mind-bending, twisty things that happen in them. Uh, again, my cousin Jade at Bedtime Bookworm really, really loved Blake Crouch's previous book, Dark Matter. Um, but based on the way that she talked about it, it sounds like it's very fast-paced and has a lot of just plot twists and things like that. I generally don't like things that are very fast-paced and plot twists often are problematic for me. I just feel like too much is happening um, all at once and it doesn't make sense and it's just too much for me. So this one, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not generally a fan of thrillers and I'm not generally a fan of anything that feels too fast or too plot twisty. So I'm not positive about this. I might get to read it if I find time, but if I don't, I'm not gonna cry about it. The second book in this category is also something that I'm not sure I'm going to find time to read, which is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. So this is another one that had a lot of hype before it was released, I think just because the plot and the um, beauty of the cover and all that sort of stuff made people really excited, but it got kind of mixed reviews and I'm a little worried about it because it seems a little bit of style over substance that it might be sort of a snarky kind of comedic take in some ways um, and that can go either way for me. It could be something where I get along with the humor and I like it and I'm all for it, but sometimes things that have such in-your-face style can be off-putting for me. So for example, I tried to read Space Opera last year, which was one of the things on the shortlist for the Hugos, and I 
could not get along with the writing style and I DNF'd it after like a chapter. So I'm not so sure about Gideon the Ninth. Um, I'm not 100% against reading it, but if I run out of time, I'm probably not gonna get to it. And the third book in this category is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. So this is a book that I have read and that I really enjoyed. I already read this with Andrea at Infinite Text, who I will link below, and I had such a fun time because this is something that is not just sci-fi, it's also mystery. And I found that it was really fascinating as we were reading it to kind of theorize about what was happening. There was a lot in here as well about just memory and about culture and about language and about poetry and also about AI. I mean, there were so many things in here that really worked for me. Um, so it's kind of very strong for me. I liked this a lot. And given that the other two are things I'm not really sure I'm interested in picking up, uh, I will be at least happy, even if I don't get to the other ones that I have read this one for this category. So we'll see. The next category is Best Debut, and there are two repeats on this category. So first is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which was also in sci-fi, and A Memory Called Empire by Arcade Martin, which was also in sci-fi. So those two are in both categories, but there is one other book that is in this category that is not in any others, which is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Now I've heard so many people reviewing this and really loving it, loving the atmosphere, loving the language, loving the kind of portal fantasy type of thing. However, um, I don't think I'm gonna read this one. And not just a, if I don't get time, I think I'm kind of actually semi boycotting this one um, for, a reason that is maybe not something other people will care about, but for me is problematic. So I had read a short story by Alexi Harrow for the Hugos last year. I think it was a witch's compendium to portal fantasy, something like that. Um, and I found the writing beautiful. I did. I really did like the writing style, but there was an underlying issue with the way that race was handled, where the story was very much a white savior story. And I found that so problematic that even though I found the writing beautiful, I just, I just felt so uncomfortable with the story and I couldn't get into it. That story actually did win the Hugo for best short story. So clearly this, um, this writing, Alexi Harrow's ability to craft stories is very, very strong but I don't know that I wanna get behind that kind of um, underlying issues with representation of race. And I also heard um, Moneyness at My Name is Moneyness, who I have a link below, talking about this book and talking about how this book itself has issues with the representation of race. And I just don't know that I can get into that. So. I think that very likely this is the sort of book where if I read it, I would actually love the writing style, but I'm just, I'm just not going to do this to myself. Um, I've heard Ashley, I don't have a degree in reading, who I will link below, talk about this whole idea of being too old for this shit. You know, it's like, don't have time to read these narratives that are putting forward kind of problematic content when there's so much out there with better um, representation that we could be reading. So I think I'm just not going to read this one, which means it'll be down for me to uh, A Memory Called Empire, which I love, and Gideon the Ninth, which we'll see if I get around to. The next category is Best Young Adults. And let me just say right off the bat that I'm probably not going to be voting in this category. Um, I in general, I like YA that has something to say that appeals to me, especially things like contemporary YA that has a lot of issues of social justice that are addressed, these sorts of things. But just more generic YA fantasy or um, sci-fi, unless it has something in the message that particularly appeals to me, I'm, I'm not always in for it. So the four books that made this category for because there was a tie, um, I'm, I have actually read one, but I'm probably just not going to bother with the others. So the first on this list is The Wicked King by Holly Black. I believe this is maybe third in a series about 
um, I believe, based on what I maybe remember hearing about some humans who are taken to the Fey court when they're young and then they have to do stuff there. I'm not super sure. In any case, uh, I'm probably not going to read this book, especially third in a series, and I'm, I'm just probably not going to read it. Next is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, I'm like vaguely interested. Um, I right now am, well, right now, I have been doing a very, very slow reread of The Wheel of Time, which is by Robert Jordan, but was finished by Brandon Sanderson after Robert Jordan passed away. Um, I'm doing this very slow reread with my husband because I had only gotten up to maybe book six or so the first time around when I was a teenager and reading it and it was being published very slowly. Uh, and so we decided a couple years ago that we wanted to go through and read the whole series finally for the first time, finish it. So I am semi-interested in Brandon Sanderson because I have heard really good things about how he finished The Wheel of Time. So this is a book that maybe at some point in my life I might read, but I'm probably not going to prioritize it for the next two months since there's so many other things that I want to get read. Next on the list is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So this is a book that actually I have read, although I was just meh about it. Um, it wasn't bad, but it had some kind of things that weren't so much my taste. Just again, a little bit of a fast moving plot and some things that weren't as logical. Um, I also wasn't so in love with kind of the relationship and these sorts of things, but the magic and the world building was very, very, very cool. The writing style was really great. Um, and I had previously liked her first book, An Enchantment of Ravens, which is why I had picked this one up. Also, this is um, something that maybe if you like YA fantasy, maybe is right up your alley. My cousin Jade at Bedtime Bookworm has this as one of her favorite books of 2019. So if you're somebody who does go in and just adores YA fantasy, this might be a book for you, but for me it was just meh. And the last book in this category is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi. So this is a book that when I had first heard about it, about the premise, I was vaguely interested. Uh, if I'm not misremembering which book this is, I think this is one that takes place in sort of Paris in the turn of the century, but there's like magic. There was a lot about it that appealed to me, but all of the reviews that I've heard of it have not been so great. So this is a book that, again, maybe some point in the future, if I feel like it, I might pick up, but probably I'm not going to work on prioritizing it in the next few months. The next category is Best Middle Grade, and this category I'm quite excited about. I really, really have been into middle grade recently, and there's a lot of stuff on this list that is pretty exciting. So there are four books in this category because, again, there was a time. The first of which is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. This is the second book in a series, and this one I'm vaguely interested in. Everything that I've heard about Victoria Schwab makes me think that maybe she's not the author for me. But there is something about this premise of, you know, a girl who can see ghosts or supernatural things that is semi-interesting to me. So if I get a chance to read both the first book and this book, I will. Next on this list is Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, and this I'm somewhat interested in. So I really liked Yoon Ha Lee's um, Machineries of Empire series, starting with Nine Fox Gambit. I thought that was fantastic. And I was really curious with Dragon Pearl about kind of, again, the Korean mythology, about some of the sort of gender bending things that go on in this story. So there's a lot about this that really interests me. Although I have heard somewhat mixed reviews. I know that people were really excited when it was coming out, but not as impressed when they read it. So I'm interested in picking this up, but I don't necessarily expect it to be my favorite read, but we will see. Next on the list is Dead Voices by Catherine Arden. And this one I'm actually quite excited to read and basically was already on my TBR. Um, I loved the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden that started with The Bear and the Nightingale. That was so good. I really loved that series. I loved the writing, I loved the atmosphere. And when I heard about this middle grade kind of horror series from Shelby at Read and Find Out, who I will link below, um, she talked about Dead Spaces, which is the first book in the series. I thought, you know what? I'm actually kind of interested in this. I generally don't read horror, but middle grade, maybe I can handle. I liked Coraline by Neil Gaiman last year, for example, which is horror for middle grade. So I actually was always 
already really interested in this series, so I'm excited to pick this one up. And the fourth book on this list, because there was a tie-in, so there's four books for the middle grade, is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. This was also already on my TBR. Um, I had heard great things about this from quite a few people. I think Yvette at Book Cave and Priscilla at Booky Charm both loved it, and Die at Bookish Die really, really loved it, raved about it, and basically convinced me to pick it up. Um, I haven't read it yet, but it is on my TBR. I actually I already had a hold on it when the shortlist was announced. So this book is something that I was a little cautious about when I first heard about it because the Rick Riordan Presents series, I'm a little worried about the humor. I did not like um, Rick Riordan's very famous one, The Lightning Thief, the, the one with the Greek mythology. I had read that on audio with Sush like two or three years ago, and I had really not gotten along with the humor. And I've heard that a lot of the things in the Rick Riordan Presents line had similar humor, so I was a little bit cautious. I didn't necessarily want to pick these up, but I've heard such positive things about this one, and I love the premise, and it just sounds really cool and fun and I don't know, like like a real joy to read. So this is probably the one that I'm super excited about on this list and was definitely gonna read no matter what, even if it weren't on the short list. So I'm excited about this one. And the last category is short work. So for this, there are three different books. The first, which is The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is a book that actually I had heard about first from Sush, my husband. He'd read this and he'd suggested that I read it because it deals with a lot of topics of immigration. Uh, and he thought that I would enjoy it. So it was already on my TBR before I heard anybody else talk about it. Shelby at Read and Find Out also really liked this book, so that's cool. So this one I'm pretty interested in. Um, he when Sush told me about it, he didn't give me too many details, and based on what little I've heard about it, it sounds like there's something in here that is unexpected. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this one is all about. The second book on this list is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is something that I know there was a lot of hype about. People were so excited. Um, and I know that I really liked her Wayfarers series, so I was also kind of excited about it too. But when people read the novella, there were a lot of mixed reactions. So this one, I think, I, if I get a chance to read it, I will, but I'm also not going to be terribly sad if I don't get around to reading it. Um, I'm just not so sure about how well this one was pulled off, even though I did like Chambers' writing in her other books. So if I get a chance, I'll pick it up. And the last book on this list is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. So this is something that lots of people are talking about. It's been a real popular book. Um, Paul at Paul Weymouth, who I will link below, loved this book. However, I have actually already tried to read this book. So I picked it up and I started reading it and I just could not get into it. It wasn't awful, but just the style is um, very unique and it was not something that was working for me. I just wasn't able to connect with the story. And after about, I don't know, 30% or so, I decided to just DNF it because I, I just wasn't into it. I just didn't care. And it's not necessarily that it's a bad book, but that the style wasn't working for me. And I can be very picky about style. Um, certain styles are just off-putting for me and I can't connect to the story. So I think that's a very personal taste. And I think for some people, that style really appeals to them. So it might work for you, even though for me, it just didn't work out. So those are all of my reactions to the books that are on the short list. I think that overall there's a number of books on this list that I'm actually really excited to read or have loved reading already. There's a couple that um, I'm not interested in or I didn't like, and there's a lot of others that are just kind of, you know, if I get a chance to read them, I will, but I'm not going to be too horribly heartbroken if I don't get to them. Uh, I also really liked um, Njiri at Onyx Pages, uh, put up kind of a video talking about the shortlist recently, I'll link that below, talking about how, you know, we as a booktube community can work to each year as we nominate things, make sure that the kinds of voices we want to see on these lists are there, are present. I like that this year I felt like the shortlist is a little bit 
better representative of the sorts of books that I want to see on there, things like Gods of Jade and Shadow and Sal and Cappy Break the Universe. Um, but I think also that it'll be really interesting going forward as more people participate, as more people nominate, uh, to see what kind of books get on future shortlists. Um, there were definitely a couple of books that I was a little sad to not see, uh, especially middle grade. I had like a lot of my heart set on certain middle grades books this year. So for example, I really liked Hurricane Child by Kaysen Callender. I thought that was so cool. And my probably my favorite middle grade of um, last year, which is the Love Sugar Magic series. I believe the second book, uh, which I've forgotten which it is. I'll just put it up here. That one was eligible and I nominated that. And I was a little heartbroken that it didn't make it. So for everybody out there who looked at the shortlist this year and thought, oh, some of these are interesting, but I wish we had more of X, Y, and Z, make sure that this year, in 2020, you're reading different books that are being put out by the authors that you care about and nominate them for, for next year. I really liked Injury's message about that, and I will try to be a little bit better about reading new releases. I'm often not a big um, new releases follower, so I'll try to do that and be a little bit more aware of what's going on in the kind of book publishing uh, community, what's being published, and try to read more on top of it because I think it's such a great opportunity to have this for our community where we get to have these awards. And thank you to everybody who has worked so hard, all of the judges and administrators for the BookTube SFF Awards. This is such a fun thing, and I'm sure it's a lot of work for all of them. So I'm just really excited to participate. Oh, and if anybody else has any thoughts on the shortlist, let me know what you think down below, or if you've made a video and I haven't commented, go ahead, let me know down below. I'm very curious what other people's reactions to this are as well.